Hey guys, welcome back to Ben and Burring's channel. For those of you that haven't been here before, we do product reviews, tutorials, and we have a live chat feature on our website to help you through your Brutti 911s. Please forgive the motorcycles in the background. Today's video is number three in our series on mashing. If you haven't checked out our first video, we'll have that linked below. We go through a very simple way of stepping into all grain mashing. Today's focus is just about how to calculate how much water you need in your all grain batch. Now there's online calculators that will do this for you, but if you've ever wondered really where that number comes from, this video is for you. Check it out. All right guys, let's jump right into it. Now, as I said before, there are online calculators and a lot of brewing software gives you the ability to automatically calculate how much water you need in your mash. But it's actually very easy to calculate without using those systems. There's two rules you need to keep in mind when it comes to calculating. Rule number one is how much water is going to be absorbed by the grain. Grain is a seed, it wants water. And so when you put water in your mash, it's going to soak up into the grain. You will not be able to recover that back into your boil kettle. So you need to take account for that in your calculations. You can anticipate half a quart of water will be sucked up by the grain and will not be able to be extracted during your mash out. The second rule that you really need to keep in mind is how much water should be in your mash. Now, with the enzymes and the job that they have to do with the grain, if you have a mash that is too thick, meaning there's not a lot of water or not enough water into it, the enzymes won't have really good access to the starches that they're trying to break down. They'll, they'll be very limited to what they can do because of the lack of free-flowing fluid. On the other end of the spectrum, if your mash is too thin, meaning you have too much water, well, that spreads everything out. So you end up with the enzymes and the starches not really being able to interact as effectively and you won't get as good of an, uh, a mash. So how much water is appropriate for a mash? Well, there's a good rule of thumb. 1.25 quarts to two quarts of water per pound of grain is an appropriate amount. It gives you a good flow of the enzymes. They can do their work and you get very good efficiency out of that. So armed with our two rules or our guideposts, let's run through a practical example of how to calculate your water grain. So there's a couple things we need to know beforehand, how much grain we're actually using in the batch. So for our example, we're gonna say we have 12 pounds of grain um, and we're doing a five gallon batch, which for the sake of this calculation, we're gonna switch that over to quarts. So that's about 20 quarts of water for your entire batch of beer. The other thing you'll need to keep in mind uh, when you're adding to your water volume is how much water is gonna boil off in your boil. In our instance, in our case, at our altitude, we're about four quarts that we're going to lose. So knowing those numbers to start off with, we're gonna go ahead and apply that rule number one, which is half a quart per pound of grain will be sucked up into the mash. We're gonna take our 20 total quarts of water that we need for our finished batch, plus our boil off, which is four quarts, and we're going to add an additional six quarts of water because that's what the grain will absorb. And that leaves us 30 quarts of water total for the batch. So that is what you're going to come into your batch of beer needing to have on hand so you can finish the entire process. With your total volume of water needed calculated, next let's look at our basically first step of the mash, which is what quantity of water do you need for your strike water? This is where you're going to apply rule number two. You have your 12 pounds of grain, as we discussed before, and we're gonna do 1.5 quarts of water per pound of grain. So for our initial strike water, that gives us 18 quarts of water to strike. All right, final step, you need to calculate how much sparge water you need to finish out your mash or your rinse water. So taking what we've already calculated so far, you've got your 30 quarts of water, total you need for the batch. You subtract out what you used in your strike water, which is 18 quarts, you're left with 12 quarts of water to use as your rinse water, as your sparge water. And that should get you the volume that you need in your boil kettle. And it's as simple as that. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching our video on calculating your water mash quantities. Hopefully it brought you some value. As a reminder, this is number three of our video series. Uh, other, the, the other ones are going to be linked below so you can check them out. In our first video, we went through a very, very simple all grain brew day uh, just to get people into it and make it nice and easy. In each of these segments now, we're getting into some nitty gritty and some detail. If this brought you value, please hit that like and subscribe button. It really means a lot to us when you do that so we know to continue to bring you this wonderful content. Catch you later, my friends.